This video is sponsored by Squarespace. So you want to buy a road race bike like this, a Trek Amanda SLR, a bike designed for one thing, going fast. And that is, according to a survey I did right here on the Just Ride Bike YouTube community page last week. And that really surprised me. I thought your next bike would be a gravel bike, an adventure bike, an endurance bike perhaps, but no, far and away, the majority of you said a road race bike is the next bike on your list. So I thought it'd be useful to go through exactly what a road race bike is, what things to look for, like geometry, gearing, weight, stiffness, and whether a bike like this is actually the right bike for you. So I'm David, you're watching Just Ride Bikes, let's dive in. We'll start with geometry, because that's a thing, the angles and numbers, that really defines how a race bike handles and rides and really separates it from an endurance bike and a gravel bike. Generally, they're designed to be long and low and put you in an aggressive and aerodynamic position. And that's great if your name is Eddie Merckx, but not so good if your name is Dave Arthur. So a stack is really short and a reach long. Or in other words, a long top tube and a tiny head tube. They put the handlebars way out front and low down and re maximize the drop from the handlebars to the saddle. Get a nice kind of flat back profile you want when you are racing. Pros will further maximize this by putting a really long stem on and slamming it by removing these spaces here for a really extreme position on the bike. Race bikes are also generally quite short in the wheelbase, very short back end and quite steep head and seat tube angles to give a bike a really responsive and really agile and moves with almost telepathic ease. Just what you want in a fast moving bunch or a very demanding twisting road. And it does mean these bikes are a lot of fun to ride, but a word of caution. They can be a handful if you're not used to them and coming from something more relaxed like a gravel, mountain or endurance bike. They can at times be twitchy and nervous in high speed situations and on rough roads. And that's why I personally believe that endurance bikes do suit a lot of casual cyclists and a lot of people better than an aggressive road race bike. They're a bit more relaxed with a taller head tube and a shorter top tube and a bit longer, so a bit easier to handle, but still just as quick and just as fast as a race bike like this. It's worth adding as well that not all race bikes follow the same blueprint when it comes to geometry. And it's worth using my favorite website, Geometry Geeks, I'll put a link down below, to compare different bikes, say an Amanda, with a tarmac and a TCR and compare the reach and the stack and other important details on a bike like this and choose the one that suits you perfectly and also use it to compare a bike you're buying to one you're currently riding to get the right size. Race bikes are designed to be as stiff as possible to really maximize power transfer. They're designed for sprinting, attacking, really powerful riders. The pros can put out big numbers when it comes to power. So we have frames generally made from carbon fiber at the top end with big tube profiles designed to maximize that power transfer. Now, in the past, that meant a compromise when it came to ride quality. All that stiffness was great for sprinting, but not so good for dealing with rough roads. But in the last few years, thanks to advances in carbon fiber technology, and now wide tires and especially tubeless tires you can now eke out much more comfort than a possible five or 10 years ago. This bike compared to my 10 year old Super 6 Evo on 25 mil wide tires, feels like a magic carpet, but yet it's faster against the clock. The real advance in technology gives a bike that are both stiff, lightweight, aero, and now comfortable as well. Now, before we go any further in this video around race bikes, I have to tell you about today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform that enables you to make a website in minutes, and it really couldn't be any easier. The interface is intuitive. There are loads of award-winning templates. You can drag in your social media networks and videos, create an online platform for selling products, 
great blog that comment on the cycling world, a library for your photographs, and much more. The list of possibilities for a website this year are endless. And right now, you get a free trial and 10% of your first purchase, so no excuses not to update your website this year by using the link down below and on screen right now. So big thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Right, let's carry on and we'll talk about gearing. The gearing is something else that really separates a race bike from all other categories. Because these are bikes designed for going as fast as possible and the average speeds and the maximum speeds in a pro race are extremely high, eye-watering in some cases, we have big gears. Now, generally we have two by with a front mech on nearly all race bikes. You can do one by, but two by just works more easily. Big spread of gears for sprinting and climbing and nice close ratios at the back. Normally on a race bike, you have a big chain set, so big chain rings and a small cassette to give you that high speed action you need. So a 53, 39 at the front is very common and anything from 1125 up to the more common 1130 these days. Now that gearing is fine if you're actually going fast enough and you're powerful enough to turn the cranks and use all the gears you have available. But away from racing, some more modest gearing is probably suitable for us mere mortals. So Shimano, for example, offers a 5236 chain set, so a nice in-between gearing. And lots of bike brands actually put a compact 5034 on a race bike because they realize that while lots of people want the performance and the handling and the kudos of a race bike, they actually need more modest gearing. And that's why we have compacts on race bikes. And then with cassettes, it's very common now to have a bigger cassette than ever before. Even all the pros are now riding 1128 or even 1130. And the latest Shimano group sets now come with 1130 as the smallest option on Ultegra and above. SRAM is a bit of an outlier in offering smaller chain sets and bigger cassettes that I think work really well if you are a normal rider running at average speeds, but still want to ride fast from time to time, but don't want to be handicapped by the big race-focused gears. Most race bikes are these days made from this stuff, carbon fiber. That's because carbon is an amazing material that lets you do all sorts of things when it comes to tube shaping. And it's also the best when it comes to stiffness to weight. You can have a super lightweight frame that's also insanely stiff as well. And now with the advances of aero, you can also shape the tube profiles to really reduce drag at the same time. But you don't have to have a carbon bike to go racing. Aluminium is a really good material that is often overlooked. And I recently bought a second-hand 2016 CAD 12 with an aluminium frame that is almost just as fast as a good carbon race bike. And you see my video on that bike by checking the link down below and up in that card floating above my head there. So I don't think you have to have carbon fiber if you want a race bike. Yes, all the pros race carbon and many people do aspire to own a carbon because let's be honest, it's a pinnacle of frame material technology right now. But don't discount aluminum because the value of money from that frame material is often far better. Because the frame costs a lot less, aluminum frames are much easier to make than carbon. You generally speaking, get a better group set and better wheels and better components on a bike costing the same or much less. Aero frame materials are also great for that race speed focus. Don't think steel and titanium are slow. Made with the same geometry, they can feel just as quick. The pros don't use them because of weight, but for normal riding, a steel or titanium bike can be just fine. And I've ridden a few in the past that have absolutely blown me away with the speed and performance. The race bikes have certainly changed a lot over the last 100 years or so. But in the last few years, we've seen lots of rapid development and two really stand out. Hydraulic disc brakes and electronic gears. Now, a few years ago, you had the option to buy a bike with rim brakes and mechanical gearing or disc brakes and electronic gearing. But now, due to popularity 
of disc brakes and electronic gearing, and it is due to a popularity, despite what some of you might say down below in the comments. Most top-end race bikes, like this Amanda SLR, are only compatible with disc brakes and electronic gearing. So, if you are looking at a brand new race bike in 2023, then you are looking at a bike with hydraulic disc brakes and electronic gears. But if you don't want any of that new tech because your name is Simon Warren, then a second-hand used market is a good option. As my 2016 CAD 12 re-demonstrates, really you get a bargain of a race bike with rim brakes and mechanical gears, and with a few upgrades, like some lighter wheels, can be a bike that gives you all the speed and performance you crave without giving you disc brakes and electronic gears. So race bikes have definitely been on a very interesting journey over the last 100 years. But my favorite improvements over the last handful of years is the space for wide tires. My 10 year old Super 6 Evo, for example, maxes out at 25 in a time when 23 tires were standard. I can't believe I used to race 23 mil wide tires at 120 PSI. What was I thinking? But that was standard back then. But now I've got 28 mil wide tires running at 60 PSI on a fat air rim and it feels amazing. Speed, low rolling resistance, loads of traction and control and fantastic comfort. And it's the comfort benefits of wide tires that now give race bikes like this much more appeal for more people than ever before. Many of the latest race bikes now take up to a 32 mil wide tire and some will probably let you go a bit wider. This Amanda SLR has a 28 mil wide tire on, but I have been running it with 30 mil wide tires. And I rode this bike with 30 mil wide tires in Belgium, and it was amazing. I've ridden the cobbles of Belgium and Northern France for many, many years, and I started on 24 mil wide tires and had a bad puncture experience. And every time I've gone back, I've gone back with a newer bike with wide tires and tubeless. And every time, felt the benefits of that technology in terms of ride comfort and just your ability to deal with such jarring, horrendous roads, it has to be said. So big tire clearance and high quality wide tires are the best thing that have ever happened to road race bikes. Certainly make them more appealing and more usable here in the real world. And there are two different types of road race bike out there right now. You have a lightweight bike like this, designed to be as light on the scales as possible, and then an aerodynamic race bike. They've become really popular in the last decade or so. And what you choose comes down to a personal preference. If you're riding somewhere flat and want that outright speed, an aero bike is gonna benefit you more than a lightweight bike. But if you ride somewhere hilly or you're riding up and down mountains, then the benefits of a light bike might better suit you. And some bike brands are merging those two categories into one. And a specialized Tarmac SL7 is a good example of a bike that's both lightweight and aero. Not as light as it could be, or as aero as it could be, but the perfect all-round bike, and definitely makes that decision between lightweight and aero much easier. So, if you're all about speed and performance and going as fast as possible, and don't mind some of the limitations of a race bike, then by all means, knock yourself out. The latest modern race bikes are fantastic things and a real demonstration of how far bikes have come. But if they sound too stiff, lightweight, and aggressive for you, then an endurance bike might be a better option. And you see my reasons to buy an endurance bike by watching this video right here. But that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all again very soon.